Hey, everybody. Welcome back. I am really happy to be here. It is the last month of 2021. Crazy to think that this year is almost over <clears throat> already. Um, I'm trying to think back to how I was feeling in December of 2020, because um, that was a really insane year. But having gone through, you know, this never ending pandemic for another um, an actual full year, right? Um, starting it with some hope that we would be finished with it in 21. And uh, clearly it's not done with us yet. So I'm um, holding on for dear life, as I'm sure the rest of you are. And um, because of that, I decided that this month's theme would be emotions. Um, it is really important to understand emotions um, and to have some ability to walk through emotions that you have. Emotions are normal. You know, we all have feelings, um, multiple different ones during the day, you know, every day things change and moment by moment things can really, um, you know, your emotions can, you know, can swing. Right. So um, I think for me, you know, my big I didn't have a lot of emotional range as I was growing up. And, and maybe this is true for everybody. Um, you know, I, I kind of, as I've explored this topic, I've thought about, you know, I kind of range from like sad to mad, <laughs> you know, that's sort of, and I think that's the human experience. I don't know that we have enough language around um, different emotions. I'm going to talk about a couple of resources that I found in this podcast, but um, you know, really understanding what's underneath some of our emotions is really important. Um, and that there's like depth to them. It's not just like, you don't just stop at being mad or you don't just stop at being sad. Like there's, there's more nuance there. Um, and also the awareness around emotion is really important. Um, because you're going to feel things no matter what. Um, and you just want to the ideal um, is really to just move through your emotions versus getting stuck there, right? Um, easier said than done. You know, there's some difficult stuff um, in life in general, and there's some really difficult stuff after, you know, the past two years that we've all collectively, globally been dealing with. And so um, it's important to kind of talk about it and continue to talk about it, I think. Um, and it's also important, um, I believe to really teach our children, um, you know, skills, <clears throat> coping mechanisms, I'm sorry, <clears throat> something is in my throat. Um, you know, to be able to teach our, our children skills around coping with emotions and kind of working through them and not ignoring them and not numbing out numbing emotions, um, you know, can really be dangerous. Um, but it's also really hard sometimes to deal with some negative emotions. So we tend to want to numb out, you know, either like for me, it's watching Netflix or movies or just kind of, you know, numbing out that way, like binge watching something is definitely a way that I will um, numb out, you know, for um, my husband, lots of times it's sports, like just kind of getting involved in something else and not dealing with the, the emotions that he has. Um, and, you know, there's a certain, area where that is a good coping mechanism, but it can kind of go into not a great idea. So today I'm going to talk about emotional intelligence. Oh, and here's what I want to say too about emotions. You know, emotions really are, um, when you look at um, the decisions that we make, um, emotions come right before we actually get into action. So we have a thought in our mind about something, and then we have an emotional response to it. And then we react, we actually act on those emotions. And so if we can, you know, be really conscious of what our emotions are, it will help us to make better decisions. So, you know, I always know for myself that like making a decision when I'm angry is really a really bad idea. Um, that's when it's like a, I try to have like a red alarm that goes off my head, like just don't make a decision right now it's better to just do nothing because the decision will be wrong. Like don't make, don't make a decision from a place of 
um, a difficult emotion. And I, I know that that speaks to health decisions as well, you know, choosing to have a procedure or, you know, do something drastic for your health when you're, you know, really sad about something, you know, you're sad or you're mad at yourself, um, or you're, you know, really angry at a situation. Like it's just not a good decision-making place to be. So being very aware of that is important because we want to make good decisions for our health. So I'm going to talk about emotional intelligence. Um, emotional intelligence was, um, like the term was written about by Dr. Um, he's a psychologist, Daniel Goleman, G O L E M A N. Um, and he was the one who helped to popular popularize emotional intelligence. He wrote a book um, a few books about it. So what emotional intelligence is by definition, <clears throat> it is the ability, I'm going to take a drink of water. I don't know what is in my throat. I'm sorry. Okay. See, this is why it's called the imperfect adventure <clears throat> because I am not going to edit that out. <laughs> so this is reality. Okay. Um, emotional intelligence is defined as the ability to understand and manage your own emotions and those of the people around you. People with a high degree of emotional intelligence know what they're feeling, what their emotions mean, and how these emotions can affect other people. Um, emotional intelligence is the ability to recognize your emotions, understand what they're telling you, and realize how your emotions affect people around you. It also involves your perception of others. When you understand how they feel, this allows you to manage relationships more effectively. So, you know, we're not getting out of this um, alive, you know, without emotions, like we're going to have to deal with them. We're going to have to deal with our own. We're going to have to deal with those people that we're in relationship with and their emotions. Um, and so it's just important to kind of have this conversation. I think I don't have all the answers, um, but I do know that emotions don't last a long time. And some of these, you know, being aware, um, which is actually the first of five key elements of emotional intelligence is awareness. And I feel like this is true for almost everything in life. Like when you're aware of what it is that you're doing or feeling or why you're doing the thing or, you know, why you're interacting with this person or why you're even in the job that you're in, when you're aware of all that, you live a much more intentional life and you can make much more intentional decisions. So um, the five key elements of emotional awareness, I mean, emotional intelligence, according to Daniel Goleman, are these. Number one is self-awareness. Um, so he says that people with high emotional intelligence are usually very self-aware. So people who are self-aware understand their emotions. And because of this, here's the key, they don't let their feelings rule them. They're confident because they trust their intuition and they don't let their emotions get out of control. I really love that. Um, you know, that they are, they're confident because they're almost, like I said, like that intentionality, they're intentional in the way they're living. They understand like, oh, I'm having this emotion, but it doesn't have to dictate my next steps, my next actions. Um, these people are also willing to take an honest look at themselves. They know their strengths and their weaknesses, and they work on those areas so they can perform better, be better in relationships. Um, and I just love that. I think self-awareness is just important on many, many, for many issues. I think if we all could be more intentional and kind of take a step back and become more self-aware, I think a lot of things in our lives would improve. And this is a big thing that I work on during coaching with my clients is bringing that self-awareness into the conversation. Um, and it can be really, really enlightening. Um, okay. Number two is self-regulation. This is the ability to control emotions and impulses. People who self-regulate self -regulate typically don't allow themselves to become too angry or jealous, and they don't make impulsive, careless decisions. Remember, it goes back to emotions dictate our actions. So if you become self-aware that you're you know, being angry and you can kind of say, okay, I'm angry not a great time to make a decision, not a great time to get into action. I am not going to do X, Y, Z. I'm going to take some time for myself and work through this anger feeling, you know, until this has subsided, it just like, really, it makes you a more thoughtful, um, 
person who lives in greater integrity and you have the ability to say no, like even to yourself, like, okay, like that carnal, like I'm angry. I want to get back at this person, you know, being able to self-regulate and say no, like, even though that's what I want to do, it's not what I'm going to do because that's not who I am. Um, it can make a really big difference. All right. Number three is motivation. People with a high degree of emotional intelligence are usually motivated. They're willing to defer immediate results for long-term success. They're highly productive, love a challenge, and are very effective in whatever they do. Isn't that awesome? It's not something that, you know, when I was reading, I was like, oh, it wasn't like initially what I thought would be one of the top five elements, but I love it. And I find it to be really true because people who are self-aware and self-regulate their emotions and can defer that immediate gratification can actually make change in their life and live intentionally and choose differently for themselves, choose to stop patterns, you know, that maybe they've had for decades. Um, these are the people when I'm in coaching with them, who just kind of do the things, you know, that we talk about, we, we decide what, you know, in our coaching sessions, we co-create some goals, um, over the next couple of weeks. And they are the people who show up in the next co coaching session, having done that thing, um, and realizing, cause a lot of what I do is lifestyle change. That's going to take time. And so understanding that they are able to kind of defer the immediate results because long-term, they know the success is going to be even bigger and longer lasting. You know, it's like real change, not just like feeling good in the moment. Um, I think that's awesome. And I love how it is, is combined with emotional intelligence. Okay. The fourth one is empathy. Um, so it says here that empathy is the ability to identify with and understand the wants, needs, and viewpoints of those around you. People with empathy are good at recognizing the feelings of others even when those feelings may not be obvious. As a result, empathetic people are usually excellent at managing relationships, listening, and relating to others. They avoid stereotyping and judging too quickly, and they live their lives in a very open, honest way. So empathy is incredibly important. Um, something that I've honed, you know, by being a nurse, being in a caring field, but also in my reading, Brene Brown talks about empathy a lot. Um, and it really is that ability to identify with others, but um, Brene had posted this really great um, like video, little short video on empathy, difference between empathy and sympathy. And so I'm going to try to describe it to you, but um, basically it's two people and there's somebody like in a pit, you know, kind of like it's been dug out and the person's in this, in this pit and sympathy um, or like even pity maybe is somebody who you like climb into the pit with the person like, oh, you know, you kind of sit in that like bad place, hard place with them. You sit in their emotions with them and you feel them with them where empathy is being out of the pit and being able to recognize, oh, I see you. Like, I see your emotions. I see what you're going through. I identify with that but I'm going to help you come out of that pit, right? Like just that's that person just kind of reaching down to help the person out of that. And it's such a beautiful picture for how we can support people in their emotions. It's not about fixing it for them. It's about identifying and understanding and accepting that they are where they are, where they are, but also being willing to help them um, in a way that can move them through that. And I think we need um, a lot more empathy in our world. And I know when I've, you know, my relationships that I have, when people can really be empathetic, um, I don't do pity. Well, like, please don't pity me. That actually makes me angry. Um, and as a special needs mom, you know, people, Oh, I'm so sorry. Like they feel bad if Jeffrey's sick or they feel bad if we're struggling, which I, I appreciate, I appreciate it, but there's a difference between sympathy and empathy, um, and pity. Like, I don't want to feel pitied. My life is hard, but everybody's life is hard. So, you know, what scale are we using sort of, it's more like, Hey, I see you. I see that this is a difficult time. Um, and I'm here for you. You know, that's the way that I feel when somebody's being empathetic towards me. Um, I hope that makes sense. Um, okay. The fifth one, the last one in the five key elements, um, is social skills. Um, which is funny because man, we had 
you know, being in the autism community, you have a lot of conversations around like teaching our kids social skills. Um, and so I feel like I might be good at this just because of all of the therapy that I've gotten <laughs> through Jeffrey's, through Jeffrey's therapy <laughs> and all of the skills that we had to help him learn that we learned ourselves. So social skills, um, says here, it's usually easy to talk to and like people with good social skills. Um, another sign of high emotional intelligence. Those with strong social skills are typically team players. Rather than focus on their own success for, first, they help others develop and shine. They can manage disputes, are excellent communicators, and are masters of, at building and maintaining relationships. Does that sound lovely? Like, it just sounds lovely. Who wouldn't want to be around somebody like that? Um, so here's the good news. If you're kind of like, oh my gosh, those five things, like I'm not good at any of them, or I really struggle with empathy or, you know, social skills, what, you know, that kind of thing. The good news is that emotional intelligence can be learned and developed. Um, here are some strategies from um, everything that I read up on emotional intelligence that may help you. So um, number one is observe how you react to people. Do you rush to judgment? Do you stereotype? Look honestly at how you think and interact with other people. This might be a really, really great time to journal on it as well in a very curious way. Um, it's not about, you know, realizing that you're judging somebody else and then in turn judging yourself. I'm a terrible human. I just judge people. That's not what it's about. Use this as a curiosity exercise to just kind of journal. How am I reacting to people? Am I judging? Am I stereotyping? And just, just really look honestly at how you think and interact with people. We all can benefit from that, especially in such a divisive time right now. Um, next one is look at your work environment. Do you seek attention for your accomplishments? Humility can be a wonderful quality, and it doesn't mean that you're shy or lack self-confidence. When you practice humility, you say what you you say that you know what you did and you can be quietly confident about it. Give others a chance to shine, put the focus on them and don't worry too much about getting praise for yourself. Um, I'm going to be honest. This is one that I have struggled with from time to time in my life. Um, I've done a lot of really awesome things. <laughs> you know? Um, and I am humble about it. I haven't been perfect, but I've done some really cool things. And I've, I've, there's been times where I felt like I, you know, deserved maybe more recognition. Um, but really stepping back and saying like, that's not why I'm doing these things. You know, I am grounded in my purpose and my calling. And so I'm doing these things no matter whether it affects one person or a million people, um, and just doing what I was made to do. Um, but it's not always easy, trust me. And I think especially with like social media, like comparison can be really hard. Um, and so we need to step back from that and just really stay grounded in, in the job that we're doing and why we're here. Um, okay, next one, do a self-evaluation. Um, what are your weaknesses? This is a good journaling activity as well. Are you willing to accept that you're not perfect? and that you could work on some areas to make yourself a little bit better. Um, have the courage to look at yourself honest, honestly. It can change your life. This is something um, that it can be also helpful to do with a coach because some of this can really be emotional and hard. And so this is something that I actually work with um, my clients on. So if, if it's something that you'd like to kind of take a hard look at yourself, but do it in a um, very safe space, if you tend to kind of be really hard on yourself and really judge yourself and beat yourself up, that's not the point. And so you might need to bring somebody in to help you um, go through like a self-reflection um, journaling prompts or something, or just in conversation with somebody. I am happy to help you with that because I know it can be hard. I've done it myself and I'm grateful for my coaches along the way. Okay. Next one, examine how Examine how you react to stressful situations. Do you become upset every time there's a delay or something doesn't happen the way you want? Do you blame others or become angry at them even when it's not their fault? The ability to stay calm and in control in difficult situations is highly valued in the business world and outside it. Keep your emotions under control when things go wrong. This can be really hard. So I actually, um, I'm, I'm going to talk about this in some 
podcast this month, but I'm really good at this in a business setting. I think as a nurse, I have learned how to sort of separate from my emotions. And when there's a stressful situation, you know, life or death, patient interactions, I can just kind of get into work mode and go on, like put my emotions in the back corner um, and deal with them later. But personally, this has been harder for me. Um, when being in stressful situations in my family, um, or in my friendships, I definitely didn't used to have a lot of emotional intelligence around it. I've gotten better, but it is something because I like control. It is something that I have to, I have to continually work on. All right. The next one, take responsibility for your actions. If you hurt someone's feelings, apologize directly. Don't ignore, ignore what you did or avoid the person. People are usually more willing to forgive and forget if you make an honest attempt to make things right. And I will also add that people know when you're not being sincere. So until you can really um, apologize sincerely and directly, like not over text or email, like on a telephone call or in person, um, you might want to wait until you're ready to apologize in a sincere way. Because I, I think a insincere apology sometimes makes things worse. That's just my comp, my own experience, my own commentary. Um, okay, and the last one, examine how your actions will affect others. So if your decision will impact others, put yourself in their place. How will they feel if you do this? Would you want that experience? If you must take action, how can you help others deal with the effects? Just being very aware that your actions affects, affect those around you in that circle of influence and being mindful of that um, and taking the time to really think it through is definitely a sign of emotional intelligence. And there's going to be some decisions that you make, some actions that you have to take that are going to negatively affect others. That's just part of life. Um, Sometimes we have to make really hard decisions, but at least being aware before you do the thing and knowing like, okay, there's going to be fallout possibly in this way, in this way, in this way, and then being there to support those people that your action affects, I think, um, is just a really great way to live in integrity. Um, and with some kindness, right. With some empathy, being able to extend empathy. Like I know this is hard on you and I'm sorry, but I had to make this decision, you know, for these reasons. Um, Life is messy and emotions are messy, but we really can work through them, you know? And um, I was talking to somebody the other day um, and we were talking about emotions um, and how they, you know, it's hard. This, this whole, this roller coaster that we've been on for the past 18 months. Um, I've had some really low moments. I've had some really high moments and really low moments. And um, the past couple of months have been intense with Jeffrey being sick and, um, just a lot happening in my personal circle, um, and the holidays always add to the emotional stuff. And, um, and I was saying, you know, it's so important for us to just move through emotions as opposed to getting stuck there. And I'm sure you've seen like the meme or, you know, where if you, if you are going through hell, keep moving, like the worst thing you could do is like, don't set up camp there. Don't set up a tent keep moving. And it's the same way I feel about negative emotions. You know, I remind myself of that. Like, I'm really uncomfortable feeling this way. I don't want to feel this way. Okay. Well, don't set up camp here, Cammie, like keep walking, keep moving. And for me, that is a lot of work around mindfulness and becoming aware of how I'm responding to those emotions. So, and talking through them, even just to myself, like, wow, Cammie. Okay you're, you're really anxious right now. Like, wow. Okay. I understand like giving, actually talking out loud and like naming my emotions has been really helpful for me and just to bring, bring self-awareness. They don't feel so scary or so uncomfortable. If I can just talk about them, even like I said, if it's to myself or my dogs or coming on the podcast and doing that. So, um, Anyway, that's a little bit about emotional intelligence today. It wasn't a little bit, it was a lot, but I hope it was helpful for you because I know that um, learning about emotional intelligence and having some strategies um, has been really helpful for me. 
So I hope this was helpful for you. Um, just a couple more podcast episodes in December. I am going to be taking off a couple weeks at the end of the year just to focus on my family. Um, and then I'll be back for year number two of the Imperfect Adventure um, coming up on the year anniversary in January. So we'll be back. I've got some great things planned for 2022, um, but I'll see you next couple of weeks in December while we continue to explore emotions. Have a great day, everybody. Bye.